Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Leon Perlman, who is from Columbia University, and he's also part of the uh, Distributed Ledger Technology Workstream uh, for Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group. I managed to say they're all in one go. Uh, Leon, thank you. <laughs> welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, th we're here basically because there's a Fiji security clinic going on. Perhaps you yes. can tell us just a little bit about what's, what's happening over the next couple of days here. I know you've been moderating a couple of sessions here. Yeah, I just came out of some very good sessions. We spoke about uh, infrastructure security uh, around uh, digital financial services, specifically around what's called Signaling System 7, which is the DNA of all telecommunication networks around the world. Um, and a lot of the DF, uh, DFS uh, applications are done over SS7. Unfortunately, it's a legacy system. So uh, there security concerns. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really designed for financial services. So it's a, sort of like a bootstrapping a legacy system from the 70s to a, a, a very modern day uh, uh, financial paradigm. So uh, hackers and bad actors, unfortunately, have cottoned on to the fact that there is this, it's not even a, uh, a hack, it's a vulnerability. It was built, SS7 was built with uh, zero security in mind, believe it or not, uh, in this day and age. So it's more exploitation of that vulnerability than it is a hack. Um, so what uh, my colleagues and I, um, in within the, the Figgy Working Group are doing, and it's actually a, a follow-on from the DFS focus group um, that the ITU um, uh, uh, convened a few years ago and ended in 2017, uh, is working on mitigants for SS7 uh, vulnerabilities, so we secure the financial ecosystem. Otherwise, as if it could be essentially building a financial ecosystem on quicksand if it's not addressed. And there, was, there were some very good um, design elements have come out of um, that session. So distributed ledger technologies, I mean, they can help advance uh, financial in in inclusion, but at the same time, there are security issues to, to yes. be considered. And uh, I wanted to ask you, what are the main security threats that are uh, outlined in the report that uh, I believe has just been just come out on the Fiji Security Infrastructure and, uh, and Trust Working Group? So uh, it's quite a large report, and in fact, from various version to various version, uh, the report grows not because uh, I authored the report, not because I want to write every day, but there are vulnerabilities that are exposed, if you will, um, every every day. Something, something, and literally every day, um, from uh, from the, the the base use cases around uh, distributed ledger technology to the end user. So th one of the main vulnerabilities that affects end users, um, just ordinary people who are using cryptocurrencies, for example, um, is where they store their cryptocurrency. So it's a, cryptocurrencies are effectively a bearer instrument, it's like cash, okay? Uh, so if you, if you don't have, if you lose your private key, which is what you need to access it, that's it, it's like lo losing your wallet. So what they do, is they give it to a custodian, which could be in an exchange. Um, now, the exchanges are, to a large degree, are very new, so they don't have the legacy type of security paradigms which you, exp which you have in you know, NASDAQ or, or uh, London Stock Exchange or, or the like. So their security dimensions and capacities, because they are, some, are pretty small, uh, some of them are very low. So they've been a honeypot, these exchanges, for bad actors. And in fact, uh, in the report, we highlight just how much money has been stolen um, from these exchanges, and it's well over a billion dollars uh, in a very short space of time. Um, and there are lawsuits and the like and that, that have uh, emanated from that. Some of the exchanges uh, do pay back the money um, some don't, some have insurance. Uh, so it's, it's all over the show, but the, the real security honeypot is on the exchanges. Um, so they are trying mitigants, like taking it a, um, offline, if you will. Uh, they, the the, the, the um, cryptocurrencies are kept online currently for liquidity purposes. So it's called a hot wallet. When it's online, so you can sell quickly, okay? Uh, and then they 
otherwise you take it offline, if you will, and that is called a cold wallet. So there's that mix of hot and cold and lukewarm, a bit like the Goldilocks factor that exchanges uh, are, 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 t are testing. But at, 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 at for, from a customer perspective, the exchanges and the vulnerabilities are, are paramount. And regulators are looking into that. And does that mean that one should be keeping uh, one's uh, cryptocurrencies in different in these different wallets? Or I mean, or will it will it appear that way, or or is it is it something which is being handled uh, at the back end? Um, well, you, you, it, it's a, it's a, a cryptocurrency and a unit is very binary, so you can't necessarily split it up. Uh, you, you, if you've got lots of types of cryptocurrencies, you can you can uh, you 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 can. Uh, have it over a couple of, of exchanges. Uh, but ultimately, you need to choose where you're going to keep it. You can keep it in your pocket on a USB stick if you want it. But then if you lose the USB stick, you, you're out of luck. Uh, similarly, if you lose your password, you're also out of luck. So that's why people hand over keys, their private keys, which is the, the password, to the exchanges uh, for that purpose, thinking that it's secure. when as the statistics of thefts show, um, still a little ways to go before there's 100 percent surety of, of uh, security. So you you said it's a 100 100 page report essentially. I mean, how are people going to be able to uh, uh, to digest that? Are they going to be be dipping in and out of it, or is it is it is it something which they they should take in its entirety and and make sure that they they are uh, uh, au fait with everything that's in in there? Well, there is a summary at the back. Uh, which is there in, in annexures really to distill what's in there. Uh, and we made some nice graphs too, to, you know, picture tells a thousand words, uh, picture tells a hundred pages. Uh, so the annexures are, are very useful lodestars to understanding what the issues are. Um, and there are also um, a number of recommendations in the report uh, which people can and they, they split into sectors so depending what sector you use that you involved in uh, you choose that annexure to guide you in terms of DLT security in terms of this this Fiji uh, security clinic what do you uh, hope will be some of the the, the outcomes of uh, or some of the the key takeaways let's say that people will will come away from uh, uh, you've got there's a hundred uh, of the top uh, uh, minds here uh, uh, do, do the exchange of information is obviously going to be valuable but do you think there are going to be some some key topics that people should be really um, taking with well them? I mean, if you look at the program the IT have put together a splendid uh, uh, program along with the World Bank and BIS of, and the Gates Foundation of course it's, it's splendid so we just just started as I said I just came out of moderating some sessions uh, and uh, the two sessions that I did moderate there are people f in the audience scribbling furiously and taking pictures of the uh, of the of the screen uh, which is always a good sign that there is information that people valuable information that people are picking up from as you term it a kind of a brains trust you're right I mean there's uh, fantastic groups of people here uh, uh, and superb expertise gathered in, in under this um, umbrella. Um, but I, I, I think that uh, anything from I ID to SS7 to DLT security to security assurance frameworks, there's going to be something for everybody. And finally, I just wanted to ask your, your work at Columbia University. How does that feed into the the the, um, the working group and 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 the the, the DLT work stream and, and in fact your, your your presence here at Fiji? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, so I head what's called the Digital Financial Services Observatory at uh, Columbia University. So it was formed um, a few years ago, and in fact, most of the work that we do there is coincident with the work that I do. Yeah, at, at Figgy. So it is, uh, it, it is parallel. We are building a, um, a cybersecurity risk management framework, uh, which fits into the paradigm of the security clinic that we, uh, we're here for. We do a lot of blockchain work, uh, DLT, whatever you want to call it. So there's a lot of parallels, a lot of synergies, and um, so bring the expertise that we, that we gather at, uh, at Columbia and bring it here and take what we pick up here and bring it back. So it's the, the synergies and the interactions are, 
uh, uh, very valuable and very worthwhile and very welcome. Well, you're very welcome here in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us, and we wish you the very best uh, for the next couple of days here in Geneva. Thank and you. It's a lovely city, and it's, I'm glad to be here. And hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some yeah, stage in the course, near future. Of course. Leon Pemble, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.